Sports Academy celebrating Veterans Day. Okay, a little ahead of schedule. I want to point out that there are better ways of honoring the brave men and women who fought for our country than telling them how great they are. All right, there's nothing wrong with a handshake and a thank you for your service. But it's got nothing on a handshake and a you're hired. So tonight I'm urging you to buy the stocks of companies that make a point of aggressively hiring veterans. Not because it's necessarily the right thing to do. This is mad money. We're less concerned with doing the right thing and more concerned with helping you to try to turn a profit in the stock market so you can do the right thing for whatever that may be. There's only one reason I recommend stocks, because I think they'll be good investments. And companies that hire lots of veterans tend to have strong stocks. Hey, you know what? It's actually an amazing correlation the more we dug down. Turns out having a highly trained, highly disciplined, highly focused, highly trustworthy, highly dedicated workforce, who would have thought it? It's good business. Now, we just heard from Kevin Johnson, the CEO of Starbucks, and that's a company that's deeply committed to hiring 10,000 vets and military spouses uh, just over and over and over again. I mean, like 2018, they got there two years ahead of schedule. Last year, Starbucks came out with a new goal, hiring 25,000 vets, military spouses by 2025, got there six years ahead of time. Uh, wow. Going forward, the coffee chain's planning to hire 5,000 more every year. On top of that, Starbucks is offering expanded benefits, and they've opened more than 60 uh, Starbucks military family stores where vets and their families can work, connect, get assistance, transitioning back to civilian life. While stop, Starbucks, the stock, has pulled back from its recent highs. It's got a terrific growth story. I think it's a buy down here. Is it a buy back up the truck buy? Well, the CEO says I trust him now. Next up. There's J.P. Morgan Chase. That is the massive bank that's made incredible efforts to support veterans. They may be better on this issue than any other company I follow, offering jobs, mortgage-free homes, and career training programs. In 2011, J.P. Morgan, under the leadership of CEO Jamie Dimon, formed a coalition with 10 other companies to create 100,000 jobs for veterans. They got there in 2014. Then they set a new goal, 300,000 jobs. They'd blown past that one, too, hiring 550,000 vets since the initiative started. That's working. On its own, J.P. Morgan hired 15,000 veterans in 2011. They've awarded more than 1,050 mortgage-free homes to military families, valued at about $185 million. And they've enrolled 30,000 participants in a free career training program at the Institute for Veterans and Military Families. Oh, and they've also done what you'd normally expect from a bank, helping veterans become entrepreneurs by giving them access to capital. When we reached out to Jamie Dimon for this special show, he told us these brave men and women have outstanding capabilities, great leadership qualities, and demonstrate exceptional teamwork. We're fortunate to have them as colleagues, and we salute them. Do you think it's a coincidence, a coincidence that J.P. Morgan's the best-run bank in America? with a stock that's up more than 30% for the year? I know, I don't think so. Who else deserves mention? When you look at the raw numbers, Kramer Fave Home Depot stands out. They've got 35,000 veterans on the payroll. That's nearly 10% of their workforce. From 2011 through 2025, they'll have spent a half a billion dollars on veteran-related causes. Home Depot knows they can do well by doing good. Incredibly well-run company, great execution. Stock's still worth owning up here. Disney, last night, great quarter. More on that later. But it's worth noting that CEO Bob Iger started a major push to employ retired service members in 2012. So, uh, communicated with him before this show, told him that I thought it was really important. He told me he's hired more than 10,000 veterans and provided career support for thousands more at other companies. Sure seems to be working out well for Disney and shareholders. That's the stock that was the best gainer in the entire S&P today. Uh, by the way, a lot of that is because they are doing this Disney Plus, and I think it's going to be terrific. How about Southwest Airlines? This whole industry loves military pilots. Southwest has over 8,100 employees who served in the military or are currently actively serving, as well as more than 1,400 military spouses. Those are huge numbers, nearly a sixth of Southwest workforce. The airline's been trading sideways for a while, too much competition and, of course, some problems with Boeing. But lately, they've been gaining attitude, and Southwest in particular has rallied about 20% since mid-August. Gary Kelly, the CEO, has often told me that he wants to hire you because he wants to run the best airline. There are a couple of utilities that have been very good on this front, too. Uh, Southern Company, Exelon, roughly 14% of Southern's new hires are veterans or active military, who now make up 10% of their workforce. Exelon's got a new mandate to fill at least 10% of new hires with military service people, and I've got to tell you, those are high-paying jobs. Walgreen Boots Alliance made a major commitment to hiring vets. They also got a program to fast-track vets for store management positions. Oh, and let's not forget about little pride here, Comcast. 
parent company to this network. Comcast is one of the founding members of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce's Hiring 100,000 Military Spouses campaign. They've committed to employing more than 21,000 members of the military community by 2021. I try not to comment on Comcast because I'm not exactly an impartial observer. But these guys know what they're doing when it comes to this room, to the vets, and to shareholders and customers. The bottom line. I am glad so many companies are making major efforts to hire veterans, both because it's the right thing to do, but much more importantly, because we're in mad money, it's good business. It's no compromise and not just some patronizing feel-good story. When you look over the firms that have made the largest commitments, their stocks tend to be fantastic performers. This is one of those rare cases when you can do well by doing good. Let's take questions. Yes. Hey, Jim. Uh, my name is Michael Wells. Uh, I'm from Tampa, Florida. Okay. I'm a huge fan of your show. Uh, I just love it. Uh, so Thank in our you. junior year, uh, we each cadet is, has the opportunity to take out the cadet loan, which is a $36,000 loan okay. which, uh, with an extremely low APR. Okay. Uh, I was just wondering, from your opinion, uh, would you recommend taking the loan? And if so, what would be the best uh, line of effort for it? Okay, look, you guys are involved in, uh, I always should say men and women, I'm sorry, uh, old school and wrong. Uh, I think that, that because of the commitment that you have to our country and to, and to what you do, I do think you should invest, but I think you have to do it with an index fund. I mean, I just have, look, if you have some real great insight to have one or two stocks is fine, but the answer is you should absolutely invest because I know that that rate, and that rate is lower than I think you're going to be able to get from a mutual fund that pays good dividends, and that's what you should do. That's how you save money, and I salute you for that, and I don't understand why the Tampa Bay Buccaneers aren't better. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. <laughs> one and two West, uh, wide receivers. Evan's the best wide receiver in the game. What is that all about? Yes. Hi, thank you for having us, Jim. Uh, my name is Jason Schultz from Gurney, Illinois. The question I have for you is with a company called Square. With the ongoing shift in electronic payments, there's great potential for the company, especially with major growth overseas. However, the company has not been part of an economic downturn since it IPO'd. So how do you think it's going to perform, and do you think it's a buy? I like the quarter very much. I thought they put up very good numbers, particularly Square Cash. I thought that the numbers initially were misunderstood by Wall Street. Stock dropped about a buck and a half after they reported, and then it finishes up three. I think the stock goes from 63, maybe goes up to, say, 70, 75. They got rid of cavity. That was a very good move. I hate the, absolutely hate the, the food delivery business. I think it's very smart. The CFO is good. The stock went down ever since the previous CFO left to go to a very good project. I think that you are now able to buy that stock at a discount. Sarah Fryer turned me on the stock. She's the CFO. When it was at 12, I think it goes to 100. Great call. All right. To the brave men and women who fought for our country, thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you to the companies for hiring them. Much more man money ahead. Now that we made it through the bulk of earnings season, retail is confused as ever. I'm pointing out the one under the radar way to find the winners and losers in the sector. Then we're on duty to help find the key to investing for the long haul when I take questions from the fabulous men and women from U.S. Air Force Academy's Investment Club. Plus, our nation's heroes fire off stock after stock on a special salute to troops edition of the lightning round on Kramer's Man Money. So let's give it a Hello, I'm Lieutenant Commander Maldonado with the United States Coast Guard deployed at Camp Lemonade, Djibouti, Africa. I'd like to give a shout out to my wife, my kids, my family. I love you and I miss you very much. Look forward to coming home. And I'd like to say happy Veterans Day to all my friends that have served with me and will serve with me in the future. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.